uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. And I would like to welcome you uh, to Sofia during the days of the highlight of the Bulgarian presidency of the Council of the European Union, the future of the Western Balkans. It was exactly 10 years ago in May 2008 uh, that we stood at this same place physically uh, and welcomed Bulgaria's accession to the European Union, focusing on the ways to make democracy deliver in full for our citizens. Just like in the case of the Western Balkans, who got a similar promise for membership in the Union in 2003 in Thessaloniki, with hindsight it seems that we are all too optimistic then and saw membership as the end of history rather than as a testing new beginning. And yet, with all the continuing challenges and deficiencies in the rule of law and media freedom, Bulgaria is a demonstration of the positive force of EU and NATO membership. Bulgarians today remain the most pro-European country in the European Union, but they are also among the most dissatisfied citizens with the pace of reform and the rule of law in their country. As members of the civil society, we need to acknowledge progress, uh, but stay ever more vigilant and demand higher standards from the governments in the region. At the same time, Bulgaria has learned important lessons which it should seek to relate to its Western Balkan neighbors. Probably the most important lesson of, of all is that progress is not linear and not irreversible. It has been made possible thanks primarily to a social technology we call partnership triangulation which is the shortest way to describe the formula for the success of reforms in transition. And this includes simultaneously active role and in many cases the leadership uh, of the civil society, includes the efforts of the reformist politicians and the help and a certain level of engagement of our international partners. This conference aims to enhance precisely this partnership triangulation. And I would like to thank our co-organizers from the European Fund for the Balkans, the Konrad Adenauer Foundation and the European Commission, as well as to know the support of our partners from the Bulgarian Swiss Cooperation Program, the CELDINET, the largest indigenous civil society anti-corruption network in the region, and the European Western Balkans Information Portal. This partnership has allowed us to bring you all together, representatives of the key Euro-Atlantic players for the Western Balkans on the eve of the summit tomorrow. The conference will provide civil society's view and input into the uneven process of reintegrating the Western Balkans in Europe. Of course, this is a, a, a historic window of opportunity uh, for the Western Balkans. And the central issue here is how do we manage, how do we balance the development agenda and the security agenda for the region. The key link here is the governance angle. The quality of governance, or rather governance gaps and failures uh, in these countries, which need to be urgently addressed by both the national governments and, and the donor community. Western Balkans face two critical interrelated risks to their Euro-Atlantic integration. Internally, entrenched corruption and state capture have plagued their economic development and prosperity. Externally, Russia has seen the region as a key battleground to reassert its renewed drive for global role, deploying an array of hard and soft power instruments in a bid to derail the region's current path of uh, integration. This is why we need a more coherent policy response from the international community vis-a-vis -vis these critical risks and threats. Western Balkan countries will have to rely on for support and synergy on both the European Union and NATO on its development partners and major donors in the region, Norway, Switzerland, Sweden, Japan. And of course, in anchoring the Western Balkan countries in the transatlantic security infrastructure, the United States are playing an indispensable role. I hope that today we're going to discuss specific policy recommendations for leveraging the international assistance into workable solutions that will help the region uh, build democracy that delivers. 